What is going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day and today we are right outside the Venetian and it's a really hot, sunny, lovely day. Summer here in Las Vegas. What else are you going to expect? Um, playing the Venetian tournament. Sometimes there are going to be tournaments where I'll play here at the Venetian or win opposed to Bali's for the WSOP stuff and this one's certainly one of them because it's an $1,100 MSPT tournament. $1,100 buy-in, $1.5 million guaranteed and this is going to be day one We'll see how it goes. It's supposed to be a three day tournament. Uh, the winner will be declared after three days. And this tournament actually, I played last year. And it was actually the one tournament I cashed at the Venetian last year. And uh, yeah, it was fun. To say that I cashed it is kind of an understatement. I kind of placed first in this one last year. So maybe I can go for a repeat. This is going to be a fun tournament. Obviously, I'm pretty familiar with the structure. There's a good amount of money up top. So day one grind, let's hop into late reg and run it up. Let's start off this $1,100 buy-in Venetian tournament with 25K in starting chips. We're in level four early on in this tournament and I pick up King, Queen of Diamonds in the big blind. There's a low jack raise to 1,000 and action folds to me. I've chipped down to about 22,000 to start here and I decide on a call. We're going to a flop of deuce, four, five, two diamonds into spades. So sitting here with the king high flush draw on two overs, this is a pretty good start as I check it over to him. Planning to check raise a lot, but sadly, he checks back. Now to a turn, which comes the queen of spades. So pretty good card with a pair and flush draw. Now, basically going to pile money into the middle. I size up and decide to overbet the pot to 3,500. He thinks about his decision for a while and ends up just making the call. So what does he have here? A pair, a draw? Let's find out when the river is a board pairing five amazing card as I just assume that my queen is the nuts. He doesn't have many fives as played here in this spot. And I think at the end of the day, I have the best hand here. Unless I lose to ace queen, that would be very unfortunate. And I'm going to play this hand like I would with bluffs and value. And it's going to be all in a total of 18.7 thousand first hand in i'm already sticking my stack into the middle the pot is about only 10 thousand and this player goes deep into the tank after thinking for a while he starts saying out loud rampage rampage why are you blasting off I guess in this spot here, being known as a punter is amazing. It's great for my image. And he ends up calling with pocket sevens. That's right. First hand, he's a non-believer. I double the hell up and it's a great start to the tournament. Chipping up to double starting stack here. We're in level five now and I pick up another premium ace king of spades. I raised it up to 900 and plus one and only the big line defense. Off to a flop of king, queen, 10 rainbow here. This player checks it over to me and sitting with top pair, top kicker on a board like this, I decided to just opt for close to a half pot sizing of 1400 and for 1400, he decides on a call. So he's sticking around and we see the jack of hearts on the turn. That's right. Another spot where we have the nuts with an ace for Broadway. There is a backdoor flush draw though. He checks again and... Yeah, I'm going to keep piling money into the middle. Like I said, being known as a punter is great because you can get called pretty light. So I decided to bet 8,000 over betting the pot once again. And this player ends up tank calling. So we've got action and the river, we fade a heart. It's the seven of clubs. So sitting with the nuts again, it's a complete brick. And this player checks for a third time. And this player has like 25,000 in his stack, a full starting stack. And I think I have an easy decision. I'm going to go for all of it. Like I said, being known as a punter, I can get called very light. So I rip it all in, put his stack all in effectively. And again, we put another player into a pretty tricky spot as he's thinking it over for a long time. We're just praying he makes the call because he obviously doesn't have an ace. Maybe he has two pair. Maybe he has a nine. Well, we're going to find out because he makes the call. I win. We don't get to see his cards. Unfortunately, the dealer never showed them and flipped them face up. But after a short time in this tournament, I have three times starting stack just a few minutes into registering. Things are going well. You know when things are going well, when I pick up aces, I raise, and then another player just goes all in for 10,000 total. I have an easy decision, which is a call. And I'm up against pocket nines. 80% favorite to win this one with an over pair of his pair. And yeah, easy game. I win. Why wouldn't I? Running hot right now, first three hands. I have 4x starting and I've been playing for maybe an hour. Let's try to make this run good last forever. I pick up ace jack offsuit the next hand with the cutoff. I raise it up to 1100 and action folds around to the big blind player who takes his time and ends up three betting. 
three bets to 4,500. And I think here, big blinds usually going to be three betting really, really strong hands or really bad hands. And the great thing about ace jack is that I block some of those good hands like ace king, jacks, ace queen, etc. The bad thing about ace jack is that I'm going to lose a lot of the time here. I feel like I'm going to whiff the board a lot and I'm not able to win this pot even though I'm in position. Ace jack offsuit, just don't love playing it. But uh, I look at his stack. He has about 30,000 in chips and we've been running pretty hot so far. Let's start being aggressive and putting some pressure on these players. I put him all in. That's right. A massive four bet jam. Any snap calls. That's that's terrible. He has pocket queens. I'm going to need an ace to win this one. The flop is no good. All clubs, which he has the queen of clubs and I don't hit. I end up losing to pocket queens. This uh, was definitely quite the punt. I'll be honest. Things were going really well. I guess I was riding the winner's tilt and yeah, trying to play high variance and sometimes it doesn't work out. I chip down here and we're going to go on a little break because I'm going to need a breather. All right. Currently on break right now after uh, a few levels of play, I think three. Kind of annoying. I got the floor talk to me and basically just tell me to stop filming because it's not a thing here. You're not allowed to do that in Venetian. You can do it in any other place on the strip besides here. Unfortunately, they run really good tournaments. So um, the footage moving forward for the rest of today is going to be a little chalky. I'm kind of unsure what I'm going to do. Hopefully, I just move tables eventually. I'm, I've got this going on. <laughs> got, I'm rocking AirPods. Not because I'm really watching anything, but I'm trying to pretend like maybe I'm watching a movie or watching some baseball. I don't know. I'm going to try my best to get some footage. No guarantees as to how good it will be. It might be like a mid-session update kind of like this where I go over the hands. But that's it. Um, the punt with the ace jack. Confirmed punt for sure. Def definitely confirmed punt. Didn't work out. Didn't get lucky. Uh, but now I have like 60,000 now after the punt. About uh, a little more than 2x starting, I think. Yeah, more than 2x starting. That's, that's the update. Hopefully I can just film and get some content for you guys. After the break, we're in level 7 now, and I pick up pocket queens in the big blind. There's an early position open to 1600. Folds to the small blind player who's an older gentleman, and he makes the call. I peel a great hand, pocket queens here, and I decide to bump it up, raise to 6,200. The early position player makes the call, and surprisingly, or confusingly, this small blind player actually back raises to 20,000. What? This player has about 35,000 behind, and this is just so strange. What is happening here? There's an early position raise, small blind call, I raise, early position calls, and then the small blind back raise four bets. This is really weird. I have pocket queens though. It's a really strong hand and I cover both players. Let's commit stacks into the middle. I rip it all in. The early position player calls for about 50,000 total and the small blind calls as well. It's a three-way all-in pot. Early position player has pocket queens. Oh, we have the same hand. Small blind has pocket kings. We're playing a 200 big blind pot all in in the middle and basically drawing dead. I'm actually rooting to see a king on the flop because we need to hit a straight somehow, and the flop is a king. Need to run a runner, but my dreams are crushed when the turn comes a brick, a pile of chips. A whole big pile of chips goes to the small blind player, and after my son run the first three hands, I run into a fat cooler here, and I'm only down to 13,000, half of a starting stack. All right, I guess we're on the come up trail. The cooler happened and we're gonna rebuild. I have pocket threes in the button here and there's an only gonna open to 1600. The plus two who makes the call and action fold around to me, sitting with maybe 16,000 in my stack. Uh, it's early in the tournament and I'm just happy to gamble here. So I decided to just go all in, probably not the best move, but you know, after what just happened, we're gonna need to chip up somehow quickly. Folds around to the plus two player who thinks for a long time and he ends up calling with ace jack. So we have a flip. Let's win it one time. The flop comes ace high. Oh my God. River to three from space. I was just getting out of my seat. Somehow, someway find a miraculous two outer on the river. So disgusting, but here we are. Maybe there is justice in poker as I chip up to 34,000 and somehow, someway, I am still alive. We are very much alive in level eight now. I pick up pocket tens on the button with over 30,000 in chips. There's an early position open to 2,000. There's a hijack all in for 12,000. So he's a pretty small stack with 12 big blinds. And with 30 big blinds in my stack, I'm gonna isolate and go all in. Sadly, the early position player also calls himself for about 20,000 total. 
It's another three way all in. It's a dicey spot. And we see the early position player has pocket queens. The hijack has king jack off suit. I am behind once again, sadly, in a three way all in. And the flop comes king high. Unfortunate to not find a 10 on the turn or river, and I lose. Very, very swingy start to this tournament. And I give away more chips just riding the variance roller coaster here in this tournament. I'm down to 17,000 and let's go back to rebuilding. So with about 16,000 in chips now, I have pocket deuces in the small blind. It's a small pair and once I look down on them, I'm going all in. There's only gonna open at 2,400, fold around to me. Like I said, sticking with the plan as I'm a short stack here in level nine now as blinds have increased. I'm all in and I'm up against Ace Jack once again at when he calls. So it's another flip against the same hand and the flop comes Ace deuce find a set on the flop the turn is a sweat he has an ace the river fade it fade the full house outs that this other player could have hit and somehow i'm once again staying alive with these small pocket pairs staying alive with a tiny stack and it's not so tiny anymore as i once again chip up to thirty-four thousand right above starting stack all right on dinner break it doesn't feel like dinner i didn't know how bright it still is outside one of the most roller coaster tournament variant sessions fast couple hours i've had so far uh to give you a quick recap i started the first 40 minutes almost 4x starting stack i think my peak was like ninety thousand. i lost a chunk to a punt and i lost almost all of it to a huge cooler and then i've just been coasting the last like two almost three hours of simply playing with like a small small stack played with like seven eight big blinds at one point with the aces hand and then uh yeah found some nice double ups with threes deuces small pocket pairs treating me well and now i'm back i have over starting stack with about thirty-four thousand going into the big blinds which i'll have like 25 big blinds give or take so wish me some luck i got like a couple uh got, like an hour of dinner break we're gonna hang out and then back to poker maybe try to win some more flips. Right after dinner break, blinds have increased and we're once again in another tricky spot. I have ace queen offsuit on the button with 40,000 in stack. There's an early position player who just sat down, raises to 3,500. There's a hijack who makes the call and now on the button in position, I think I could do a few different things. I could go all in, I could just call, or I could make a small three bets. And I think all three options make the most sense. And in game here, I opted for a small three bet of 12,000. I think we can just use this good hand and position to either just not go all in and not try to go broke in this hand. So I raise the 12,000, early position player calls, the hijack folds. So we're going to a flop with 29,000 in my stack to king, three deuce, two clubs. And this early position player decides to just rip it all in covering me. He lead jams on a king high flop. And I say, nice hand, you got it. I fold and... uh yeah, I'm out of this hand. Shortly, it's announced there are 297 players left in the tournament, and we're playing till 11% of 822. So here's a little math equation for you guys at home. Once again, sitting as a short stack, I have about 28,000 in stack, and I pick up pocket sixes in level 11. With about 14 big blinds, I'm in early position and raise it up to 4,000 with my pocket sixes. And the player on my left is a known crusher, Brian Altman. He decides to three bet me small to 10,000, an action folds around to me. It's pretty uncomfortable to go all in once again with another small pair, especially facing an early position three bet. But uh, yeah, I'm sticking to the plan because my hand's good. I'm going to just have to not be afraid of going broke. So I go all in and Brian actually ends up thinking about it for a while. He said he didn't notice my small stack. So he might've been three betting me a little light here, which might be good news. He ends up making the call anyways. And we see we're up against ace four of hearts. Luckily, I'm only up against the one over card instead of two usually. He hits a four on the flop, but the turns and rivers are clean. Pocket sixes holds for another fat double up with over 60,000 in stack now. These small pocket pairs are really the heroes of this day. What's even better is that there's no time to waste. The very next deal, 60,000 in stack, I see pocket aces under the gun. This is what dreams are made of. I just got these new chips and I'm putting them into use. I raise it up to 4,000. The button makes the call and then action folds to the small blind player who has a massive stack covering the table and he announces all in. Yep. Those are the two magical words we loved hearing. 
We just got these chips. I snap call my entire stack in here. The button folds and we're up against pocket sixes from the small blind. Can we find back to back double ups, please? Hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and for that run good. Let's run it. Trying to hold and pocket aces does. Fade the six, fade the 20% run bad and I'm feeling great. I get another monster pile of chips being pushed my way and with over 120,000 chips in my stack now, what a great spin up in back to back hands. So nothing too interesting happens in level 12, but moving on to level 13, I pick up ace queen of spades in the cutoff. There is an under gun open to 8,000. There's a hijack player who has a massive stack. He ends up deciding on a call. Here in position with the suited ace queen versing this action, I feel like I certainly could squeeze sometimes, but you know, it's a very playable hand. I don't need to blow up the size of the pot, especially multi-way. So I decided on the passive route and call as well. Another thing to note is that we are also 45 away from making the money and into day two. So there's definitely a lot of ICM pressure here. Anyways, the button folds and onto the small blind player who has about 115,000 in his stack. And he decides to do something very strange and he makes a small raise to 31,000. What? Wouldn't he just want to go all in a lot of the time, especially playing out of position? Action folds all the way back to me, which is unfortunate as now I'm last to act. I'm playing in position and it feels like he's going to be really strong here a lot of the time or have like a weird hand like ace five as a bluff or something. Ace queen suited for 35 big blinds seems like it's just such a good hand. So, uh, you know, I block ace king, I block aces, I block queens. What worse could happen here? 35 big blinds, I decide to go all in. Let's try to win this thing and he snap calls. That is awful. Not a good sign as he has pocket kings as suspected. He has a really, really good hand. And the flop comes, ace queen, fade the king and I win. What a massive, massive hand to stack up from where I got it in, not in great shape. I end out ahead and with a massive chip stack of 275,000. This is the run good you need to win tournaments. Let's spin this up. With things going well and with 135 players left in the field, I pick up king jack offsuit in the low jack. I raise it up to 9,000. The small blind makes the call with a really big stack, about over 200,000. So I cover them by a little bit and we're off to a flop as the two big stacks here. The flop comes queen, four, five, two hearts. He checks it over to me and I think this is just a good board texture to continue betting on, especially with a king and queen to block some stronger queen X holdings. I bet 8,000 and he calls. The turn comes the 10 of spades now, brings in a backdoor flush draw and he checks again. I'm improved to open-ended and I have the jack of spades, which could give me an opportunity to rep a spade draw on the river if it comes. I size up and decide to polarize and bet out 25,000. This player takes his time. Doesn't look like he's super comfortable with the situation. Granted, we are going to be playing a really big pot if he calls and I am one of the few people that can stack him on the table. Anyways, he does end up making the call. So let's try to improve and just hit one of our outs. Let's make our life easy. The river is the eight of spades. Oh, so close to being a nine dealer, but it is a spade. So when he checks for a third time, look, the plan was to potentially rep spades and bluff at it. And we are so close to making it to day two here. What idiot would ever make a big bluff close to making it to the money? Yep, this idiot does. The one that you're watching right now. I size up for 75,000 chips. Stick them into the middle. It's a huge bet and cue the tank. I'm praying for a fold. And honestly, while he's thinking, I'm just trying to think of hands that he's thinking so long with. Considering I block king queen and I block queen jack, maybe he has queen jack, I guess, but I think king queen just has to call a lot of the time. Maybe he has queen nine suited. Who really knows at this point? But he ends up throwing his cards into the muck in a very frustrating way. Let's freaking go. I got away with murder here, stealing the pot with king high and we're close to the money. This was huge to chip up. Upon entering the last level of the day, we're level 15 and this hand's gonna go pretty quickly as it folds the small blind and he jams his small stack about 80,000. It's about 16 big blinds and I peel ace 10 of hearts. Yep, I make the call. I'm all in here as well. And we're up against king queen of hearts. Wow, 
If all the hearts are here, there's a chance that we could combine for a royal if a jack of hearts comes on this flop, and the run out actually ends up a flush. So what a cooler spot. Nut flush versus second nut flush for this player to bust on the last level of the day. It's just nice to have the cooler go on my side of things. All right, snap leaving, just signed the, the bag. Nice to bag on one bullet. Everyone's out there behind me. I am just steamrolling back home. It was a long day and I can't wait for day two, which uh, will be probably the next video of a big stack. I don't know how much my stack is compared to the rest of the field. Uh, we're gonna find out on day two, but I have a lot, 419. At one point, I had like eight big blinds. It's fucking insane. Tournament run is nice, feeling good. Time to get some sleep. Thank you so much for watching it. this grind of a day. Uh, we're gonna be close to making the money, so this will be fun. All I have to say is the last time I played an $1,100 MSPT Venetian tournament on one bullet and bagged a big stack in day one, that's a mouthful, I won it. So let's try to run this up. <laughs>